morning, everyone. So today I will uh, talk about attacking the VxWorx OS. So little presentation. So I'm Yannick Formaggio. I'm security researcher at Estuary Innovation Labs, uh, which is a startup company uh, in Vancouver, Canada. So you can find me on Twitter, uh, by the handle Zalama Jack or Yannick Formaggio on LinkedIn. My hobbies are looking for vulnerability using fuzzing techniques. Uh, I'm a Lego fan, and today is my first public talk. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, for this project, I uh, I had some help from my coworkers Richard Su and Eric Liu. Eric is the lead security researcher of the lab. <coughs> so, uh, today I will talk. So I will do a little introduction about VxWorks OS and what has been done previously. Then I will try to go deep, deeper inside the VxWorks uh, memory management and uh, some memory protection. And then I will uh, elaborate a story of what research we did. So we starting from fuzzing to discover vulnerability to finding a vulnerability and then trying to exploit it. So, so what's VxWorks? For people who don't know <coughs> what's VxWorks, it's the number one embedded device uh, real-time OS. Uh, uh, WinRiver claimed it's over 1.5 billion devices that runs with Vix VxWorks. And uh, it supports a lot of CPU arch architecture, so x86, uh, ARM x86-64 recently. MIPS, uh, PowerPC, and, and so on. So I wanted to verify if uh, we could find a lot of VxWorks OS. So as you can see here, uh, we can see 123K uh, VxWorks uh, device facing the internet. So mainly it's VxWorks 5 version and some VxWorks 6 as well. So let's go back to VxWorks. So it has been first released in 1987 with uh, nothing fancy features, so just 32 bits processing. Then in the 90s, uh, VxWorks 5 has been released and it was the first uh, real-time OS with a, a network with a network stack. Uh, at this time, uh, no, no security, no specific security features was implemented inside VxWorks. Uh, then, uh, in 2000, uh, you can see the release of VxWorks 6 version in December 2004. This version uh, came with some security improvements. So, for example, a real-time process, and that no more task shared memory, so every task is segregated. And then uh, recently in 2014, VxWorks version 7 has been released. So new feature is supports for 64 bits <coughs> instructions and, I, and they added way more security inside it. So you can find uh, VxWorks in different domains, so automobile, uh, aer aerospace and defense uh, space, so you can see the Mars rover, for example, runs with VxWorks. Some robotics as well, network uh, equipment, uh, could be v v VoIP phones, uh, and you can find as well in some uh, Airbus aircraft. <coughs> and so I talked about the last one, the VxWorks 7, and they claim it's uh, the OS for the new trend, uh, Internet of Things. So, <coughs> sorry. Uh, next I will talk about why we choose to 
study vague works and uh, what's the point of uh, what's the security feature we can find in it. So here you can see that VXWorks has, has not much vulnerability, so just 12 vulnerability, 12 CVE has been issued. Uh, seven of them are just denial of service, and one and one is the exec, execu, code execution. Sorry, and you will see after later we will add one, but it, no CVE created for now. So VXWorks and security, so. We know that uh, WinRiver treats the, the VxWorks security seriously. For example, in 2011, they announced a partnership between them and uh, McAfee company to improve the security of the OS. And I told you before that the version 6 introduced some memory protection. I will come back to this after and 7.x as well, so for example, digitally signed modules, encryption, uh, password ma uh, management, uh, they now store password with SHA-256 algorithm, and some other stuff. <coughs> so what has been done before and what inspired us for this work, for this project? So first, the talk about from AG Moore, about shiny, shiny old VxWorks vulnerabilities in 2010. So, AGMO uh, highlighted the fact that there was a problem with the WDB RPC. So, I will just introduce briefly what WDB RPC protocol. It's uh, it's basically it's a debugging interface between uh, uh, used by the developer to debug their task applications and stuff on the VxWorks target. So he implemented four Metasploit module that uh, use this WDB RPC protocol. And then he found uh, that the password was stored with a very, very, very weak entropy. And we were able to reproduce this, this attack by creating a rainbow table with around two, 200k hash passwords and with this, you can crack any password on the VxWorks OS. Then the talk about dev TTY0, uh, not the talk, the blog article, reverse engineering VxWorks firmware. So it was just to have some, uh, some knowledge about the, the OS. And then uh, after this, uh, a, talk, a white paper from Aditya, Sud from Secnish who detail a bit more the W debugging interface and uh, introduce some OS uh, security feature. So now I want to talk about what's <coughs> inside VxWorks and specifically the memory layout and the protections they implemented in it. So why I want to talk about this because uh, you know that uh, most of exploits use the memory to <coughs> to spread. So here I ch just choose to talk about the x86 memory layout because after I will show you what we did and we used the x86 architecture for our work. So you can see here, uh, so the address starts and are relative to the local mem, local address uh, variables that you can set when you create your VxWorks project. And then, so you have <coughs> first the interrupt uh, descriptor uh, or vector table, which to, uh, uh, any interruption and, uh, as w and uh, exception uh, pointer as well. And uh, you can see it has the interrupt stack associated with it because uh, starting from version 6, the interrupt stack is totally se segregated from the other task, task stack, sorry. Then here, uh, I just highlighted this guy because uh, when there is an exception occurring on the VxWorks, it will display a message uh, regarding the severity of this error and uh, some of them are stored in this 
and memory area. Then here, <coughs> highlighted in green, you can see the entry points of the Vexworks OS and then some other memory address. And as I talk about the WDB protocol, uh, yeah, this protocol has a uh, specificity that he, he, uh, he shared this area of memory with every task, every processes on the Vexworks OS. <coughs> so Vexworks provides some MMU a base feature in addition to the virtual memory support and some non-MMU based protection uh, for the heap. So I will detail some of the protection. So here you can see the task and interrupt stacked overrun and underrun detection. So what they do is they, <coughs> so they allocate some memory before and after the stack of the, of the task, for example, and those memory, uh, uh, those memory area are non-readable, writable, or executable, so when you try to read them, you will raise an exception that will be catched by the OS. Then they also introduced the non-executable task, task, and non-writable text segment, so in red, you see that the text segment of the program is read-only, and the uh, data se uh, segment is read and write. <coughs> and also you have to know that starting from VXWAC 6, all the uh, task stack is non not executable if you set this parameter, include task, when you, <coughs> sorry, when you create the project. And then one last uh, memory protection. So the, to detect the null pointer usage, they set the memory area starting from zero to be non-readable, writable, and executable. So when you try to read or access it, it will raise an exception. And uh, we saw a lot of exception when we first uh, VXOX OS. And so the Next, I will talk about the heap protection. So basically, the first one you can see is almost the same as the stack protection. So they just add some memory area before and after that if you access them, you will trigger an exception. And the second uh, image just to show that uh, each, each task has is uh, heap. And you cannot... Uh, overrun on the other heap. So <coughs> now I've talked talk about this. I will talk about our main work on this project. So I will talk about from fuzzing to, exp to exploit. So we did this project be first because uh, one customer asked us to do a pen test on this uh, VexWorks 5 and 6 version and he provided us some uh, pre-configured OS image and tools with some uh, network protocol uh, activated. So first, uh, port map, FTP, TFTP, and NTP, so, and other protocol as well. So we did some fuzzing on it. For this fuzzing, uh, I used my uh, fav favorite uh, fuzzing framework, which is Sully. But uh, if you're familiar with fuzzing, uh, when, you, when it comes to fuzz uh, non-conventional OS, I would say, you have to find a way to uh, detect accurately when the target crashed to know when you want to reboot the target, etc., or to have some more information about the crash. And so, well, after some uh, research, we decided to use the WDBRPC protocol like the VexWorks developer do. So the, the problem is the only implementation that we found was the one from, uh, I, w uh, I mean the only open implementation we found was the one from HDMore, but it was in Ruby, 
and not uh, as complete as, as I needed for my project. So we decided to re-implement uh, the WDB RPC protocol in Python to be uh, more, to interface easily with uh, Sully. So yeah, so I, talk, I told you that uh, WDB RPC is the debugging interface used by the Bakesworks developer to, de uh, to debug their apps or tasks, etc. It's a service running on port UDP 17.185. And if it's open, you can uh, execute whatever you want on the target. So anything, you can read, write memory, execute some code. So you, you own the, sim the system with this. <coughs> and th this protocol was based on the Sun RPC protocol. So how it works? So on the left side, you have the host side, so the PC, for example. And on the left, uh, right side, the VXWorks uh, target. So running on the host, there is a target server, which communicates with the target agent using WDB message. And this communication uh, could be on different transport layer. So it can be done on the RPC, I told you. Uh, you can use a, a pipe as well. Uh, serial port and you can implement your own solution but both the target server and target agent has to know how to use this transport layer and then when the target server is connected to this target agent you can use some uh, other tools provided by uh, the Vexworks uh, development environment so for example a shell debugger etc so what's uh, interest me here is mo mostly the debugger <coughs> part. Uh, I decided to show you how the packet structure is because there is not much information, open information on the web. So as I told you, it's uh, based on the RPC, uh, Sun RPC protocol. So you can see you have the IP header, UDP, and then the RPC a request header for the call. So the call message are the message sent by the target server, so from the host. And then you have the XDR encoded stream. So XDR is just uh, packing some uh, integer and strings uh, together. And the uh, three first field of this XDR encoded stream are the checksum, the lengths that uh, and the sequence number. So the checksum and length, uh, the checksum is computed uh, for the, only from the XDR encoded stream and the length as well. But you, from the length, remove uh, four bytes. Uh, I suppose it's uh, the sequence number, but I'm not sure. And then you have the reply from the target agent. So here you can see it's just Two, di two major differences. The, sorry, the RPC reply header is only 24 bytes. The last field of the, this header contains uh, the error message, if there is any. And there is another error code uh, in, in place of the sequence number, as you can see here. But this one is just for WDB errors. And you will see after that this error code is important. <clears throat> so now that we have some basic information on WDB, I want to talk about uh, how to debug. Oh, thank you. Uh, how I managed to debug the Vexwax target. So what I did, I just do some network reverse, uh, network protocol reverse engineering. So what I did, I connected the Vexwax development environment to the target and see what's happening when I do some, some actions. And so then I have this diagram here. So on the left, you have the host, and on the right, the target. And so to debug the target, you have to follow certain step. step sorry. First step, you have to connect normal. 
and uh, target uh, yes the target reply you uh, if it's okay you can connect and then there is a slight difference with conventional debugging I would say because on the VXWorks uh, 5 and 6 version uh, you have to set the <coughs> sorry you have to set the task you want to debug to be breakable because by default they are non-breakable. So if you try to put a breakpoint on it, you will raise an exception for VxWorks 5. For VxWorks 6, nothing happened, but yeah. So here is, uh, so you have to call a specific function inside the memory of the VxWorks OS using this w, uh, WDB function call message. So yeah, you acknowledge that you, if it's okay. And then you can tr uh, start to uh, attach to the process. So there is on VxWorks 5, there is three steps to attach to the process. So first, you have to suspend the execution of the task you want to, to, to attach to using the WDB context suspend. And then you add, uh, I, would, I would say, a breakpoint at the entry point of the task using this uh, procedure call. And then you say, uh, as you suspend here, you have to continue the execution to, to be able to debug it. So you, you send the WDB context continue message to the target. On VxWorks 6, the, they introduced some new uh, procedure. So it's slightly different. So the first one, not very original, just uh, they use the WDB target connect to. So the only difference, uh, it adds in the payload uh, a way to identify the, the host. So just a string uh, saying uh, uh, you, you name whatever you want. <coughs> and then you, so again, the function call to set the target, uh, the task breakable. And then the new difference now, it's instead of using the, the context suspend, event point add, and contest continue, they use the uh, evaluate gopher uh, several times. So what's gopher here? It's a small interpreted language. Uh, so it has two objects. It has two objects, so the pointer and the tape. <coughs> And so you send some uh, commands, so it's like a script, I would say. And uh, the target will answer with the pointer to the memory area was the result of the command is. And then uh, at when, you've, when you're done sending the evaluate gopher, you, it will send you the final result, and then you will be able to to read from the memory that they pointed you uh, the exact uh, result here. So I, it was weird to see this because evaluate gopher just gives you some information and not actually put breakpoint or attach to the process. But anyway, it works like this. So now, uh, now we know how to attach to the target. What we want to know is when a crash occurs, how to detect it. So on VxWorks, uh, when something happens on the target, the target sends a message on the same port uh, as WDB RPC, but totally, uh, it's not random. It's just all the messages are like this in VxWorks 6. And for VxWorks 5, the, those four bytes here are equal to EE as well. So when the host receives this message, he knows that there is uh, something, on the, something wrong on the targets. And then he has to send the WDB event get to acknowledge this message. If you don't do it, uh, the target will keep on sending the event notification. And you cannot do anything uh, else. And once you acknowledge this message, you, you can ask for more information about what happened on the target. So for example, you can get what the content of the registries, uh, the register, sorry. 
here and read some memory around the uh, crash area, for example. So you can disassemble after to do post-mortem analysis, etc. And oh, you can, uh, in this uh, answer, I forgot, uh, they will give you the exception number. So it gives you more information. So now let's talk about the framework I implemented. So this framework, as I told you, is in Python. Uh, for now, it supports only VxWorks 5 and 6 version, but not all the protocol, because I don't need everything uh, on the WDB RPC implementation. You have to know that I think there are more than 50 procedures, and uh, as you can see, I don't use 50 different procedures here. And uh, it implements a uh, basic remote debugger as well. I named it WDB DBG. Not very original. <coughs> this framework has some, uh, has some external dependencies. So I needed a uh, PyF tool to read the VxWorks image. Uh, the VxWorks, so basically it's an OS image that you compile when you create the project. And it contains, so when I do this, I can read the, all the imported function. So for example, when I uh, use here, uh, the WDB function call here, I need to provide him the address, the entry point of the function I want to call on the target. So if I have tools uh, and help me do it. And then uh, I used Capstone engine, engine sorry, to disassemble the, the code around the crash area. But, but for now, this feature is not fully implemented in the framework. So I told you I used the Sully framework to do my fuzzing. So now I, I have to find a way to interface with it. So in Sully, if you don't know, you have the descript process monitor.py that's uh, process monitoring for Windows uh, targets. So I just uh, use some of uh, some of the method here implemented here. Uh, for this, I implemented a debugger thread class that instantiates the WDB DBG in a thread and just one callback to detect when the crash occurs. <laughs> and I also implemented another class that's called process monitor ped RPC server. So in Sully, uh, the author, the original author, uh, uh, implemented his own RPC protocol to, to call uh, the function on the different script he, he had. So I have to uh, implement this part uh, to communicate with it. And then the VXMon uh, class that wraps everything. So how everything interconnects now. So here, so the Sully further, so the my further script for any network protocol. The VXWAX target is here. And the uh, VXWAX process monitor, so the one I told you before that use the WDB DBG uh, framework to debug the process on the target. So between VxWorks process monitor and target, sorry, we use uh, the WDB RPC protocol. And on the, between VxWorks process monitor and the Sully further, the paired RPC protocol, because for now I have no choice. So uh, now I will just show you one demo so it's just a video because the setup of everything is very long, so I don't want you to wait for it. So here are the results. So, so in this corner, 
Sorry, I can't see. <laughs> so you see here the Pixwax OS running inside VMware and uh, uh, Sully monitoring interface, uh, which is a web interface. Here, the VixWorks monitor that will at some point detect that there is a crash occurring on the target. Uh, the other uh, windows are just uh, network monitoring. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, VMware uh, uh, virtual machine monitoring as well. So this window will help me to reboot the VMware and uh, restore the last snapshot. And here is just the Sully fuzzing script. So here you can see when he detects a crash, he stores the information here and reboot the VixWorks OS automatically. So, and then you can continue automatically to fuzz the, the target. Okay. Okay, so here you can see that we found a lot of different crashes, but it's always the same crash, but occurring on different uh, port map uh, procedure and so now I will talk about the crash we found and how we analyze it so we found that so uh, on the when you use the pot map protocol which is uh, transported by RPC protocol uh, we trigger a crash by setting the credential flavor which is a field of the RPC header uh, when, when you set this value to a, a negative value, uh, it will crash the VXWAX here. So you have, uh, just for you to know, the credential flavor is used in the authenticate, underscore authenticate function here. Uh, it tells the how you have to authenticate to the, uh, to the process. So there is three different ways to authenticate, but I will come back after. <coughs> so here is the disassembly code of the authenticate function, and I will show you where the why and where the crash occurs. So here you can see that they store some parameters in EAX, and then here is they store the credential flavor value inside EBX. And then you can see that they compare EBX with the value two, so the three different uh, method to authenticate. And depending on this value, they will jump or not uh, at, this, at the address uh, after. But as you can see, the jump is uh, a signed jump. So seems uh, like it's uh, integer overflow. So the, okay, so when we set this value to negative value, what happens? Uh, it's never greater than two, so it will never go to the branch and continue its execution until this line here, uh, which is a, a call inside the function table. And they use directly EBX value to to, to call the, func the correct function. So I will just show you how the, uh, what the, this, fun uh, this function table looks like. So here you see there is uh, just three functions. So the first one is uh, no authentication. The second one is use the uh, Unix authentication. I don't, uh, didn't uh, display the whole disassembly. And the last one is SVC or short, but as you can see, it does nothing but return into. So I don't know what's the point of this short authentication. <coughs> so before I show you uh, how we exploit it, I will just uh, tell you that we reported this vulnerability to WinRiver on July 22nd, and they acknowledge it pretty quickly on the 23rd. And 
they confirmed the vulnerability on the 11th of August. Uh, the, this vulnerability affects the VxWorks version between 5.5 and 6.9.4.1. Uh, so uh, they uh, announced me yesterday that they are providing the patch for the, this vulnerability, but they will not do a, a public announcement or create a CVE for this because they think it's not it has not a big impact on VxWax target. And, and we will see that they are wrong. Uh, every, uh, so they asked me to uh, announce that every VxWax customer should check the, their knowledge base for details on how to patch the vulnerability. And yeah, I want to mention that I have been authorized to disclose every details I will show you after. So as I told you, we have here an integer overflow, and we were able to uh, do a remote code execution using this vulnerability. So uh, just for you to know, we, it works on VxWorks 5 and 6, but I will just show you the VxWorks 6 version because they implemented some security feature, etc. And I will show you that this, with this exploitation, we bypass any memory protection they put. So, <clears throat> so if you remember, I told you that the, st the stack is not uh, executable. You, uh, the text segment is uh, read-only. The data segment is read and write-only. But what about the heap? The heap has nothing. Uh, has nothing, uh, no protection, no specific protection. So what we did, we ip spray the shellcode using the port map protocol. So we just send our shellcode as a port RPC payload. Uh, and then when the ip spray is done, what we do, we have to compute the credential flavor value so that we can, when the authenticate function reads this value, it will jump inside the memory area where there is a pointer to the, uh, where there is the address of an area between uh, of where our shellcode has been sprayed. So we managed to find that at every reboot, the address are slightly different, but one area is always the same. So we jumped, we tried to find an address uh, that jumped inside this area, and then we have our exploit. <coughs> so I will show you what we did then. So I will start the VxWorks 6. So it's possible, uh, I'll just reboot it. But just. Uh, so you can see the boot process. Okay. <coughs> oh, okay, so just. Uh, who am I? So you can see the user is target. So it's the default user on VxWorks, and I will. Using my uh, exploit, oh. okay, I can see. I'll see. demo effect. So, yeah. so uh, what I did, I just added an account which is named AA, with the password ASDF, ASDF, so very simple. And to show you that the target is still running, I just run the function that's called uh, task show, so it's show 
all the task information and memory address. Uh, so yeah, and now just to show, I will connect to the target. Ah. Oh, sorry. So what I did after, I, you can connect to the target using these credentials. And you have the, uh, you can control anything on the target because you run everything with the highest privilege on, this, on the VXWorks. So you can edit the boot, uh, boot line, you can do whatever you want on this target. <coughs> so yeah, I think I'm done. So if you have any questions.